Did you ever think your job sucks? Well, imagine you were working in a cleanup crew, getting rid of tortured bodies and all the bloody mess surrounding them. Suddenly your 9 to 5 doesn't sound that bad anymore, does it? Hi there, it's Micha. Are you curious to hear more? Then join me by watching this video. Cheng Bok is mostly a simple, God-loving guy who, for some reasons, ended up working for the local organized crime lords, getting rid of their leftovers. Along the way, he brought in his protege, Tai Yin, a young man who rarely speaks a word. One day, their boss ordered them to pick up an 11-year-old girl from a group of kidnappers and to keep her for a few days. As he lives more isolated, the burden to host the hostage fell on Tai In, who also has a little sister living with him. The boss's plan was likely to blackmail Cho He's father, but as they went to ask him the next day, they find him duct taped and ready to be tortured, <laughs> ending up as a body in their care. The new boss has no idea why the girl was taken and told them to continue sheltering her until further notice. Meanwhile, the kidnappers want their payment from the two cleaners as the dead boss didn't pay up front. The kidnappers also didn't want to handle the ransom part, as that is not their area of expertise. Back home, Cho He tries her best to fit in and bonds with Tai In and especially his sister, while Tai In waits to see how things develop. Unfortunately, almost everything that can go wrong is going wrong, so in the end, Tai In has to figure out what his conscience is able to bear. This Korean thriller slash drama draws most of its appeal from the acting in this mostly quiet movie, sprinkled with some moments of violence. To portray Tai In, actor Yo Ah In, one of Korea's biggest stars of his generation, even cut off his glorious hair. The film is also capitalizing on some weird and funny setups, like when a policewoman stumbles into Tai In's home, or the ineptness of most fellow criminals, who only seem to have one skill and otherwise struggle, like the kidnappers who are only used to grabbing the victims, but are not able to deal with the concept of also keeping them. Most of the movie's runtime I spent speculating how much of Tai In's simple-mindedness is acted, assuming he was just holding his head low, while I also tried to figure out how much Cho He is pretending to fit in and how much could be attributed to Stockholm Syndrome. I will share a small bit of that in the spoiler zone after an appropriate heads up, of course. Let's get to the rating. With lesser actors, this movie would have likely been a miss, merely being solid average due to some good screenplay ideas. The actors were able, though, to inject the needed humanity into the characters, so you keep being invested over its entire running time. There still were some moments that were a little bit stretched, and some plot decisions could have been resolved a little bit more elegantly, but it is one of those movies you don't regret to have watched, though you might not rewatch it anytime soon. I'm rating this one with 7 out of 10 points. If you don't want to get spoiled but enjoyed this video so far, please like it now before you leave. And if you are no subscriber yet, maybe consider changing that. If you don't mind spoilers or have already watched the movie, please follow me into the spoiler zone. Welcome to the spoiler zone. Let's check out what else happened in the end. Tai In's mentor was supposed to get the ransom money, but got so suspicious that he fell down some stairs and died. Not able to call Tai In to bring the girl to the parents, he followed the backup plan, bringing the girl to another place. There she was drugged and obviously supposed to be sold into the child sex trade, which even Tai In, who turned out not to be pretending to be a little bit slow, came to understand. Already back home, his sister asking for her made him turn back to break her out. He also got some other kids free in the process, but left them behind in a van, where they were fortunately found. He took Cho He back to live with them until he realized what living with him is doing to the girl. So he brought her back to her school the next morning. Even though it seemed she liked living with them better as living with her parents, at school she still pointed to Tai In as being the kidnapper, showing either that she only pretended to fit in or making sure he would leave so she is not tempted to go back with him. Likely a little bit of both. Okay, this closes the spoiler zone again. Did this review spark your interest for the movie? Or did you already watch it? Let me know in the comments. That's it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, like it and feel free to share it with your friends. And why not subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any future video. 
Make sure to also hit the notification bell to get a heads up whenever a new video is posted. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching.